Hello. So, um, I posted a contest on Tuesday or Wednesday asking for some great self-care video ideas and Tamlin is the winner. So I am going to mail her one of my um, Patreon exclusive experiment bowls next week when we ship out this uh, restock. And um, her topic was she wanted to know what kind of self-care practices and activities that I do to help keep me grounded. And uh, that was a great question. And something I've kind of been wanting to talk about anyway, um, but I'm gonna try to do an overview of my favorite go-to practices. And a lot of them are mental activities. Um, yesterday, I came up with something that was a real game changer, and hopefully you like this too. This is what the video was gonna be on, but it's gonna be a little broader now. Um, I was really stressing out about something. Janet, um, my shipping manager, is trying to navigate this new platform, website platform and shipping environment, and we were having some issues. And I was really stressing out because I want this to be as easy as possible for her. And as I was stressing, I was trying to come up with ideas, or, uh, solutions, and um, one, worrying is creativity. It's create, it's a, a it's wasted creativity. You're being creative when you're worrying, but there's much better use for it. So it just popped into my mind. There's nothing to worry about. And I used to use that mantra and I don't know why it fell out of favor in my mind, but that's a really important thing to remind yourself of. Um, and that is in my emergency self-care toolkit if there if I can't you know really stop and give myself some loving attention I can at least remind myself there's nothing to worry about that doesn't mean that really crazy stuff isn't going on but what great solutions come out of worrying so as soon as I remembered that two minutes later I came up with a really good solution after I stopped using my creative energy for worrying. So that's one. Um, two, about two years ago, and some of you have probably already heard about this one or heard me talk about it before, but it, um, I made up an activity called the Calm Activity. And I will post a link in the description of a video that I made a couple years ago. And you know, it's not the best video, but it gets the information across and has a really good activity. But in a nutshell, CALM is an acronym for, the C stands for what can I do to give myself some care right now? And um, sometimes it's the little mantra, like there's nothing to worry about, or just taking a few deep breaths. I like to just ground into my body and like really feel what's going on in my body and try to stop that monkey mind chatter story that's trying to create reasons for why I'm feeling this way. Cause you know, sometimes it's right, but most of the time it's just, you know, it makes things worse. So I just feel what I'm feeling in my body and give myself some loving attention in that moment. And the A in calm stands for allow myself to feel however I am feeling without trying to fix it or without trying to like, oh, why are you feeling this way? You shouldn't be feeling this way. Just allow yourself to feel this way. Um, just like, you know, if you, remembering back when you were a child and you were feeling a certain way and you were trying to get that point across to somebody and they were like, ah, oh, buck up, quit crying. And not acknowledging your feelings. We do that to ourselves a lot too. And there's an inner kiddo inside of us and that's what the feelings are the feelings are the language of that inner child trying to um, relay something that's my belief anyway then the L stands for um, 
offer love to that part of yourself that's feeling that way like you would for a little kid that's feeling sad or scared just just say it's okay I love you and you know don't try to change the feeling or anything like that and then the M is about either bringing it back to this moment like is this thing that I'm worrying about or feeling stress about is it really existing in this moment um, and sometimes it is <laughs> but a lot of times it's not you're projecting um, a story into what how you think things are gonna unfold into the future and if you can just bring it back into this moment bring it back to your body and just feel what the feeling is um, just that acknowledgement it, you know like like a little child that's not getting acknowledged they're throwing a tantrum and that's what those really uncomfortable feelings are so anyway I've got more information about that in another video um, another thing that I do is I like to journal I art journal I went through a training program 12 years ago to become a certified creative journal expressive arts facilitator that uses dual-handed journaling and drawing um, to gain access to a different part of your brain where that sensor and editor um, has a hard time getting to and it is powerful stuff it has changed my life immensely and so I started art journaling using some of those tools that I learned and uh, here is my favorite journal. It was just a book. I had some stuff I had to get out right at that moment and I did not have any journals, which was crazy. So I made a book and it was just a songwriter's rhyming dictionary and I'm a songwriter too, but I, ne I never used it. So um, I gave some shape and texture to my feelings. And I did a lot of journaling with my non-dominant hand in this. And even looking back on it, that time period where I was creating this journal was such a transformative experience and directly led to me meeting my husband. Um, that it's really nice that I have something that I can look back on. Like I did some collage from um, that's a, from a photograph and I collaged around it and then I know you can't see it very well but um, I've been thinking about doing some journaling and really easy immersive um, creative projects here if that's something that you're interested in let me know and the last thing that I do, I'm still processing this book. So back in my 20s, I found a book at a garage sale called Focusing by Eugene Gendlin, I think is his name. And I, it's, it had been so long since I, I read it and I forgot all about it. And somebody said something that triggered a memory of that book and I went and looked for it and found that it was on audible which I process information a lot better by listening to it um, so I bought it again uh, as a audiobook and it has everything to do with grounding into your body and not engaging your mind when you're trying to um, make contact with how you're feeling about something so if you're you know processing your mind's all jumbled up you're feeling uncomfortable you're raging on your husband because he forgot to put the toilet seat down or whatever uh, maybe it's not really about that toilet seat and it's something else and that just triggered a bah. and so focusing is I think there's six steps to it um, and that's another video that I would like to do um, more information on and I will probably give away a copy of that book when that time comes when I do the video 
So, um, a lot of my self-care practices are mental practices and creative practices. Like, you know, I go out a lot in the backyard with my shoes off and uh, do earthing or grounding and just, you know, feel the, the earth on my feet and try to engage all of my senses in that process. Hot baths. I love taking hot baths, but uh, the bathtub in our new house is it's not good and so that it's more frustrating than anything else and back when I was single I used to just go I'd fill my backpack up with water and food and my sketchbook and art supplies and just walk and go find an interesting place and set up camp for the whole afternoon and you know sketch whatever passed by me or you know just go to a coffee house but right now since things are so busy <coughs> most of my non-mental self-care practices are all about doing as little as possible you know finding a chick flick on Netflix and getting a cup of coffee setting up camp in my bed and vegging out on something light and silly and about love <laughs> so and then the last thing um, I made some of these that were intended to be magnets, a little gemstone. Uh, this one was too big for to really hold anything up with the magnet. Uh, so I've been keeping it in my pocket and it's just a little something for me to, you know, fiddle with to kind of shut the monkey mind off and focus on this tactile sensation. <coughs> Anyway, if any of y'all have any fun practices that you do, um, let me know in the comments. So I hope you found some of this helpful and I will talk to you later. And if there's anything else, anything that I've talked about in this video that you would like me to do an entire video on, let me know because I could talk for probably an hour on all of this. Bye.